So we're celebrating 125 years of the International Herald Tribune. Oh, that's a long time, 125 years. You know, my, uh, my youngest kid believes that when his dad was a child, there were dinosaurs on Earth. <laughs> now, really, this is pretty much how he sees it. Planet Earth before the iPad. <laughs> Those were the dark ages, you know, prehistoric times. They didn't have the Herald Tribune back then, so they didn't know many things. They believed all sorts of things. For a little part of those 125 years, I've had the privilege and really the chance to work with the International Herald Tribune. I've been doing cartoons for them for the last 11 years. And so many things have happened over these last years. So many incredible things. Uh, like, for example, uh, a kid was born. Yeah, I'm talking about my youngest child, <laughs> the one I just told you about. And like all babies of his generation, the first thing he learned to say was <laughs> Google, of course. Uh, what else happened? Yeah, a black man was elected president of the United States. Amazing. Barack Obama, he came on the world stage. He was so gentle, so sophisticated. He took it soft to the rest of the world. He even, at first, wanted to make peace with Iran. Uh, let me see, what, what else? Yeah, a great man, a great leader died, unfortunately. He was the all-time favorite of political cartoonists of the world. Kim Jong-il of North Korea, he passed away. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a big fat joke. The, the way we work with uh, Serge Mehman and the uh, opinion gang at the Herald Tribune is this. We, we agree on the theme, the topic of the day by 9 a.m. And then two hours later, I send them four to six sketches. So I send them to, to, to Paris. And so it's a kind of a, of a collective process. We, I count on them to help me pick up the best, uh, funniest, most relevant cartoon. Because the art of editor, editorial cartoon is not just about provocation, as some people wrongly believe. Even some of my colleagues, if you want to talk about the Muhammad cartoons, we can talk about that later. <laughs> uh, no, it's me, I'm really trying, my, my, my aim is to try to aim at the middle of the target. You know, often it's more difficult to be pertinent than to be impertinent. But if you can do both at the same time, that's really the graal. Anyway, we're here to talk about Europe. Well, I'm well, uh, oops, black screen, Europe, what happened? <laughs> I'm well placed to talk about Europe. I'm Swiss. Uh, you know, Switzerland is neutral, so I'm going to give you the neutral point of view on Europe. The flag, it's still 12 stars. Shouldn't it be uh, 27 by now? Because Europe has enlarged south and east, and this became a symbol of prosperity and wealth. People on the eastern borders, they were looking at this symbol and this is what they were seeing. <laughs> so Europe grew on the economic side, but on the political side, it, it has been a bit slower. In 2004, finally, a European constitution was signed, but it was not an easy process. You can recognize some of the feuding, feuding fathers. So Europe was on a bright path. The euro was skyrocketing. Uh, we were spending like crazy. It was party time. And then something happened in 2008. Some guy on the other side of the Atlantic played too many, too much casino games. And uh, he broke the bank. So the financial system was about to collapse. And we had to fix it. So people rushed to fix it with that big pillar here. But where did the pillar come from? 
Well, it came from that other building here called government. <laughs> Taxpayer money, so this spelled future trouble. Nobody saw 2008 coming, not many people. Do you, do you remember who got the Nobel Prize for Economy that year, 2008? It was Mrs. Jones for keeping her savings at home. <laughs> then soon, Greece, Mr. Prime Minister, was in, uh, in need of urgent help. And uh, Europe came to the rescue. <laughs> see, the, <laughs> see the little detail, the, the, the cord? Details count in cartoons. But help came with uh, strings attached, of course. You can sum it up in two points. Make sacrifices and work hard. But the little guy on the right, maybe he's from Greece, maybe he's from Spain, he's just asking, can I get a job first? <laughs> you know, Europe, as seen from the outside, is a complicated, messy thing. This American sums it up. Could be Timothy Geithner. You know, things would improve if Europe could speak with one voice. What would Europe say? <laughs> Authority, as you know, was quite controversial. But with the arrival of François Hollande, we thought that maybe the equation might change. But he learned very quickly the rules of the classroom and who the teacher is. So Europe went from one rescue plan to another. Where is the way out? Well, hope came uh, last month with the plan from the European Central Bank to buy unlimited amounts of bonds. You see the guy on the right? See the, the guy on the right? There is always a skeptic in the room or a, a stock market trader, if you want. And the guy is asking, hey, is unlimited enough? Will it be enough? Will there be light at the end of the tunnel? Well, maybe we'll have some of the answers tonight with the panels and discussions. As for me, let me just uh, add my own uh, uh, proposition to the debate. I suggest that we change the European anthem, that we switch from Beethoven to Gloria Gaynor. <laughs> and to this. Thank you very much.